It's always nice to wake up to new packages. So we had a little Amazon package come in. We got a uh, new lock for the boat. Right now we're using just a standard key lock and we only have one key and I don't know if we have you know friends that come and visit and for whatever reason we lock up the boat and they have to leave early. Um, we want them to be able to get into the boat. Plus, we, since we've only one key with Sid and I and work and everything, uh, it, it just makes more sense to have a, have a combination lock. So, And something else I'm very, very excited about. We got our new water level sender slash sensor. The original one that came in the boat uh, no longer functions. And this is a uh, direct replacement so the company that manufactured the original one is a company called Wema, W-E-M-A. So if I come over here, you can see their their name on the um, on the gauges. And I believe that this company, KUS, K-U-S, either purchased them or they rebranded to KUS. But um, this is this is the the Wema direct replacement. This one has a much better build quality. Um, you can see it's all stainless, which is pretty pretty darn sweet in my opinion. Um, and it looks a lot nicer. The the original Wema one, the shaft was plastic, the um, mounting piece up here was plastic, it was all plasticky. Um, this one looks a lot, a lot nicer. So, pretty stoked and uh, gonna have to go ahead and you know, remove all the pillows for the 27th time this month. <laughs> Which you know, I hate. Um, they also, with it came uh, a little gasket, as well as some some screws there to uh, lock the lock the system onto the tank, uh, and just in the event that you were fill it so it doesn't leak. Well, I should have known from the shower head issue that a lot of the original components on this boat are European standard. So it turns out that the European standard for water sensors slash senders is different from the US standard. So the water center that I took out was the European standard, which uh, has a certain level of resistance when the little floaty is down at the bottom of the unit, and then a different amount of resistance as it comes up here to the top. So the European standard is a uh, infinite level of resistance when it's up here at the top and then goes down to about 30 ohms when you're down here at the bottom. So 30 ohms signifies an empty tank and then as you get closer and closer to, uh, should be 240 I believe, but it's technically infinite when it's, when it's the very top, that signifies a full tank. The US standard is opposite. So on US sensors, the 30 ohms is when the tank's full and uh, when the tank's empty, that's when it's at infinite amount of resistance. So, long story short, is that the sensor is sending the complete opposite level of uh, resistance values to the gauge. So that means that when the water tank is full, it's reading that the water tank is completely empty, and when the water tank is actually empty, it's reading that it's completely full. So, it's not the end of the world. Um, it'll work for at least the time being. Um, it's just something I didn't really think about, um, but I guess that makes sense since now I've realized that a couple of, or everything that I've replaced so far has been European standard. Also, the interesting thing is you definitely want to read the user manual. At first thought, you think, oh, well, you know, the black wire is ground and the white wire is whatever the, you know, incoming voltage is. Uh, not the case. Pink wire is ground, <laughs> which is weird, and then the black's actually the voltage coming into the unit. Um, so, I don't know if it would cause any problems if I had mixed those up, um, but it's just something to, to be aware of, that the color coding isn't kind of the, the standard of black ground, everything else potentially carrying voltage. So, I think this means what I'm going to do is purchase some new gauges, since the gauges are pretty cheap, they're only like 30 bucks. Um, I mean, it's a shame because technically the gauges work, and I, I think they look good. I mean, in my opinion, they look fine. Um, but it's just, I, I can't find a European standard sender unit. I mean, I can, but you have to get them from, like, you, know, you have to buy them from the UK, and it takes forever to get here, and they're super expensive. 
So I'm most likely just going to get um, switch these out for US spec since these are both European spec. So for instance, if I turn on the indicator right now, so you'll see that now the water tank over there is showing completely full and look where the floaty is. <laughs> and as I scoot it back, I guess technically it'll be correct when it's halfway full. <laughs> um, but then if I bring it all the way up to the top, which should be a full tank, you'll see that now it's showing an empty tank. Looking good. I put a little bit of silicone in all of the screw holes. Uh, I ended up not using those bolts just because they require a um, basically a threaded insert, which didn't really make any sense because this is plastic, so I can't really create threading in there. And even if I do, it's going to slip pretty easily. So I ended up just going with some standard stainless steel screws, which have much bigger teeth on them, uh, which hopefully will give a little bit more grip in the plastic. Um, I also went ahead and siliconed around the exterior as well, just to ensure that in the event that I accidentally overfill the tank, that we don't have any sort of um, leakage coming out. Hey, how's it going everyone? About to start working on a couple of things. So um, on the list for tonight, uh, this evening, I plan to finally get up our little lock mechanism um, so that we can sleep in here safe and sound and not worry about people trying to get into the boat at night. Um, so I have that planned for tonight. I also plan on finally putting up the basket for the aft cabin. So we can do that. It's really nice. Be nice to put my, my little tablet in there. Quick update on the bed situation. I found out that uh, moisture tends to gather under the cushions. And I always read, you know, posts about it and things like that. And I figured it was because the boat wasn't kept in a very dry slash, you know, non-humid state. And I figured with us having the dehumidifier, we didn't have to worry about it. But it turns out that's not the case. There actually is a decent amount of water that's gathering under the mattress, um, kind of directly on the uh, plywood that's underneath the mattress uh, as, you know, as we sleep. Um, just bodies tend to give off, you know, humidity and, and moisture. So it's gathering in the mattress and because the mattress is nowhere to breathe, it's condensing on the bottom of the mattress up against kind of that flat surface. But what I did was I purchased uh, online, I found this kind of foam um, gap material. And it's almost like this interwoven kind of like plastic lacy material that um, almost looks like a, like a really large like Brilla pad. So it has a lot of air gap that um, it, the air is able to pass through. And the one that I purchased, there were there were a couple. I found one that was um, three quarters of an inch thick, and then one that was an inch thick. And both of them are marketed for boats and RVs for you know using underneath the mattress so you get better airflow. So this bed is almost a perfect queen size. It is a little bit curved. You can see the that area kind of curves. So I did order a queen size for that, and that should be coming in in a couple days. So that will definitely help with the humidity aspect. On top of that, unfortunately, the original cushions that I've been sleeping on, I think they, were, they came original with the boat, so they are pretty old, and they've already started to sag. Um, uh, mainly, I'm like a side sleeper, <laughs> so mainly where my um, hips are when I lay at night and it's kind of digging into the plywood down below. So that's why I actually have this, this blanket here kind of acts as like a cushion since it's not very comfortable to sleep on. So I actually have a really high end memory for the mattress. That's a queen that I'm obviously not using back at home. So I'm gonna see if one of these days I can convince my dad uh, to help me bring it down here with this pickup truck and see if we can fit it in here. Since Sid and I both lived in apartments kind of before we moved on to this boat, we actually have a lot of random kind of apartment goods that we've attempted to quote unquote repurpose for the boat. So this is one of them. Uh, it's a pretty nice cutting board that Sid had and it actually has these rubber feet on it, which is really nice. Now, you probably wouldn't really need that in a house that much because nothing's gonna really move. But this is actually really nice because 
usually if you have a cutting board on this and you lift it up to go in the fridge, it's gonna slide back pretty aggressively. Now this one still slides back, but this rubber feet actually slow it down and it catches on the back of that lip. So we can technically leave that there, go in, you know, get out whatever we need and whatever we wanna cut, um, or if you know we're, we're grabbing something else, and you can go ahead, grab it, and then bring it back down, and then cutting boards right there. We actually had our first guests over this past weekend. We had Sydney's cousin and her boyfriend, and they've actually already both had COVID. So even though Sydney and I haven't had it yet, um, you know we're, we're not at risk because they already had it <laughs> and they had the antibodies. So they got to utilize, they were the first ones to actually utilize our rebirth. And they really liked it. Um, they said it was pretty comfortable. The only problem was it was raining the morning that, um, or the, the, the morning after they had spent the night over. And this hinge, I still haven't had time to go out and seal on the outside. So that unfortunately was dripping right down onto the uh, extra pillow and frame that goes across here. So that pillow got wet and that of course isn't a very fun experience while you're sleeping uh, to get rained on. But other than that, yeah, they really liked it. Pretty big fans of the boat and um, they found the V-Birth pretty comfortable and they actually were surprisingly uh, or they actually found the sink up here to be surprisingly useful which I know I always trash it on the sink in the morning or in the morning in the beginning when I first bought this boat but I've actually kind of come to like it and I think it's a nice little addition here to this room. So my new mattress kind of separator slash platform came in today and I just took up the old cushions and this is what I wanted to show you. So this is the moisture from just one night of sleeping since I dried it out um, yesterday before I went to sleep and it was completely dry. And right now it's actually pretty late in the afternoon. Um, and this is how much water is still left. And you can see it's evaporating kind of quickly right now since I took the mattress up. But that's just a good example of how much water truly builds up just in one night of sleeping. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take out the other one. Sorry, I'm out of breath because I was wrestling that thing back under the, uh, in that area, and I wanted to get a video of this before it kind of all evaporated. So I'm a little out of breath, but gonna get this other uh, chunk of the mattress out and then um, determine what size lengths I wanna cut this kind of mattress um, um, insulative um, air uh, gap layer. So this is the company that I purchased the mattress kind of anti-condensation pad from. Uh, pretty cool, they're a small business located here in the US. They're called Raven Wolf Marine. Um, I believe I bought the um, product off of Amazon. They may have their own website, I'm not too sure. But pretty cool, they, they kind of walk you through what the instructions are, um, and they also kind of give you this little nice handwritten note. Looks like they have a dog named Wolfie, I'm assuming, which is probably where the company was named after. But uh, the, the, the pad's actually made in the U.S. too, which is nice. Um, basically, it's just these kind of polypropylene um, little kind of support pieces that provide that air gap under the mattress. So you can see they're, they have some thickness to them. And they're pretty springy. They look pretty good. And you put the rough polypropylene portion uh, on down, you know, on the on the actual surface here, and then you have kind of a nice felt um, a piece just to protect your mattress from the roughness. So it, it does come in one big roll. So this is the queen size, and they do recommend um, cutting it to the dimensions of your specific bed, since the beds are always a little bit different sizes. Um, so this is what they recommend for a queen. So they say to cut it uh, kind of um, I guess perpendicular to the way that you would sleep in the mattress. So you would have one piece there, one piece there, versus a king, you'd have the two long strips, one on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a measuring tape and see if I can get it kind of measured up correctly since, like I said, it's not a perfect square. Um, it's actually kind of like a weird trapezoid that's curved. <laughs> so if you look, um, this piece here is actually longer 
this edge is longer than that edge. So that's the short, short end there. This comes outwards a little bit. You can see the angle. And then this is actually curved here. It has slight curvature to it. And then same down there, that goes in to the smaller length end down there. So there's probably about a six inch differential, if I had to guess, between this length down here and this length. Plus there's that weird curvature of this piece. Very, very slight curvature. So I have the upper portion cut to size, kind of. You can see it's not perfect. That edge there is a little bit crooked, but I can always fix that. Um, I decided that I did want to cut it exactly to the dimensions of the bed, even if that means I'm going to end up potentially with some gaps. I decided to focus on where kind of our heads and upper body lay and get that as perfect as possible because that's where, you know, kind of from like the, the waist up is where most of your body exists and theoretically where most of the moisture is created. So I really wanted to get that perfect so that there wasn't any pieces where the mattress wasn't sitting on top of that um, just so we could ensure that it stays as dry as possible. The second strip was actually almost perfect, almost a perfect fit. I went ahead and got the overlaps um, pretty much as flush as possible and have everything oriented the way I want it up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and duct tape the flap onto uh, this piece here on the right just so that now it will kind of move as one piece. That way I can get it oriented correctly uh, and then trim some of the excess off here. Not too shabby. I say so myself. You can see I duct taped. Uh, I might have gone a little bit of overkill with the duct tape, but just wanted to make sure that it's definitely going to stay together. And obviously, you don't want to go too much overkill with the duct tape because that would defeat the entire purpose of the air gap because then your mattress is resting on a non breathable surface once again. So, I didn't want to do too much duct tape, but enough to kind of hold it in place. Basically, I did three strips this way. You can see four kind of I guess perpendicular that way and then kind of the same down there so should hold it and it's pretty much cut to the dimensions so pretty happy with the results and i do have this kind of little little strip left over but uh, not the end of the world so i'll just probably toss that out so let me go ahead and get the mattress back on and see how it looks looking pretty good there's zero to very minimal overhang the only piece where you can really see it is right around down here, but even still, um, kind of just barely visible. And I think once I get the mattress topper on and the sheets, which generally are wrapped all the way around kind of the cushions anyway, I don't think we're gonna really be able to see it too much. Um, you can see that apart from that, it does, I, I did notice it, it already has raised the mattress up just a little bit, but that's totally fine. An additional added benefit, which I didn't even think about, is that this now um, creates kind of a, a gap for any liquid. So technically, if we were to have another one of those wonderful diesel leaks back there, it may help preserve the, um, the actual cushion itself, since it will now be lifted up off any diesel that comes down um, that way. So it's kind of an extra added benefit that I hadn't really thought of until just now. But um, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's, it fits well and it seems like a good quality product. And now it's just gonna be time for me to test it out tonight and see how it turns out. I just had the pump out boat stop in a couple minutes ago. Uh, it's always nice to have, especially when it's cold out, it's winter like this, to have the pump out come to you. Um, so props to Annapolis, uh, whoever, whoever runs it, I think it's just like the, the town of Annapolis or Annapolis Harbor. Um, they just come around and they pump you out uh, 50 gallons for I think five dollars So this boat has a 35 gallon tank um, And I just pay the full five bucks whatever and um, get it pumped out So I do you should do that every Saturday since the tank starts to get pretty full and if you all recall I don't have a working um, Sender for the holding tank which brings me to my next task for today, which means I'm going to take out the lovely broken sender in the holding tank and measure it so I can determine the length of the sender that I need to purchase as a replacement. Uh, if you all recall, I just recently replaced the water sensor, but it is reversed, so the water's 
com nearly completely depleted. I also did purchase um, two new gauges that are US spec, since these are European spec, so that the readings will not be reversed. Whew, well, I got that sensor out, and unfortunately now the entire boat reeks. It smells like straight up methane. Um, and it's because the holding tank is actually back there behind the, the Dr. Pepper box and the air must come through, you know, the cold air gets through there and by the, through that um, the wooden wall back there. But I did get the sensor out and I was an idiot and forgot to put on, I had my work gloves on it, but I forgot to put <laughs> nitrile gloves over those. So now my work gloves are all poopy. Um, so that's disgusting. Um, so I'm going to have to air the boat out now. And I got the sensor back in there. It's not completely like flush tight. So it's still probably going to smell. I'm wondering now, now that I said it out loud, I'm wondering if I should just snip the wires, take it all the way out, and then just duct tape the hole just to make sure that the air truly does not come out of there. Because I don't want to be living in this boat for the next week or so while I wait for the new sensor to come in.